It's not your usual river. Does it have life in there? Yes. Does it you know, have water? Yes. The reason that the city exists is because there was a river? It's the lifeblood of the city. It always has been. And let's um, unleash the power of the river and make it a city amenity. Come with me and I will show you what the river has to offer. Ah, Los Angeles. City of angels, city of stars. The beaches, the palm trees, Hollywood and its movies. Wait, don't you think you forgot something? Uh, surfing? No, I'm talking about the river, the LA River. You know that concrete ditch that's 51 miles that's about to be revitalized? What, you've never heard about it? All right, let's roll back in time so I could tell you how it all started. The reason that the city exists is because there was a river. Uh, even in indigenous times, that has been a crucial place for people to meet, for commerce, languages to be exchanged, uh, between the Tongva and the Chumash primarily. Mostly there's not much water in the river, but when we get big rain events, those 10, 15 days a year, this channel will be very high and the water will be moving very fast. It will be very dangerous. So the river is part of the landscape, part of the history of the city, for good and for bad. In the early part of the last century, there were some major floods that wiped out communities, there were deaths, bridges were wiped out. These devastating floods that occurred in 34 and 38 knocked out infrastructure, destroyed homes, they threatened the growing economy of Los Angeles. The Army Corps of Engineers said, we have a solution. We could channelize these waterways and we could direct them and prevent flooding. The city begged them to come. So they came and saved the city. They were the heroes of the time. What they did is they went from one extreme to another. We began this really destructive program that the whole world joined us in of concretizing and, and laying asphalt, moving cars uh, at the cost of nature. That had the byproduct of making this giant uh, piece of the landscape disappear. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, when it did it, was a very clear objective. It says, let's get the water as fast as possible out of here. And to do that, they created a channel with a 1% slope, very slick, so the water can go very fast. It has been amazingly effective to prevent flooding. It has kept the city safe. We humans got involved and basically put a straitjacket on it. And that's what the concrete is, right? We, we try to tame this natural free-flowing river. Wait, so you're telling me they put concrete on top of a free-flowing river? Yeah, pretty much. For safety reasons, it just became a flood control channel. But in the 80s, some people wanted to bring it back. Amongst them, Lewis McAdams. Who? That guy. When he was in his 40s, I believe, got bolt cutters to cut a wire fence to get access to the river. And it was illegal to be in the river in the, in the 1980s, totally illegal. So when we would go there, you were trespassing. That was the beginning of the, the conversations about bringing back the river as it used to be. One of the really important moments at the beginning of Friends of the LA River and the work that Lewis McAdams and, and other river advocates did was simply to change the nomenclature to insist that this was a river. And one of his first big accomplishments was putting a sign at everywhere where the river was crossed by a road that says, you know, LA River. Hey, what, you mean that drainage ditch? You know, what, do you, what river? That, that effort to name it, to rename it, to reclaim the notion of it as a river was an important and pivotal part of uh, rethinking the role that the river plays in the life of the city. And um, I think our, our approach to the river for the last 50 years has not been respectful. It's been utilitarian at best and disrespectful at worst. It took us 70 years to put the concrete in, to displace communities, to rob communities of, of their ability to you know, see nature in their backyard. 
Now we realize that there's other uses and potential that we may have missed. The river's been the river. It's just our perspective of the opportunity that it actually has to offer has changed. Full Art in the City participated in studying where we could have those spaces of ecological restoration. This was the start of the Arbor Study, whose goal was to identify vacant spaces along the river so we could start this revitalization. It's really a window to do a wider, a bigger and more ambitious project. We co-signed the most ambitious alternative of that, of that study, which was Alternative 20, that called for the most ecological restoration within an 11 mile stretch of mid-river. And that served as a base for the master plan. The city did a master plan in, uh, that was approved in 2007 and we came up with over 200 projects that could be done in the river, alongside the river. Uh, by the year 2000, everyone who ran for mayor of Los Angeles said that the, the river will be our next great public space. You've got so much momentum already for the river. So the river is really coming back to LA? Well, it's always been there. Now the real question is, what do we want it to be? So we want to uh, see a river that connects communities rather than divides them, and to see a river that's treated like a resource, like a brother, like a friend, like a family member, instead of like, you know, a dangerous concrete channel. The cry for open space from the community is there. The need is there, the want is there. It's there, it's for everybody, it's, there's no, it's beautiful. We have an opportunity to really change how people see the landscapes of their own immediate neighborhood. I think it's about participation by all. Um, so not only is it definitely going to happen, uh, it must happen and it, and it will happen. I'd love to see that, that would be awesome. So did you learn anything? Yeah, a bunch, but I'm still a little confused on what you really mean by revitalization. Yeah, that's normal. It was a lot for one day. But in the next video, I'll tell you how the river can become an ecological corridor, an open space, and strengthen communities. So stay tuned for more.